about 10 to 20 percent of pregnancies end up in a miscarriage. So on today's show, we speak to two women who share their very different experiences. Hi, welcome to the show. Now, this particular show, I'm here with this amazing, beautiful woman <laughs> who has quite a story. Thank you for coming on the show, Olivia. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so you, Grace. much. You're welcome. Um, before we even begin, maybe you could tell people at home, who is Olivia, what do you do, what do you love, what are you about? Gosh. Yeah. How long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Olivia Minoru. Got it. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's quite obvious that Minoru is not my... Uh, Origin. Original name. Yeah. yeah, it's my married name. Got it's it. a Meru name. Um, so I'm originally from Australia, but I see myself as a new Kenyan. You are. Yeah. My kids are Kenyan. I have two kids. Okay. Um, one is two and a half, a little Got girl. It. Okay. And I have a boy who's nearly five. Oh. And you asked me what I'm about. Yeah. Well, I mean, motherhood is a big part of my life, but mm. I also have another big part of my life, which is I love public speaking. Mm. Um, and... Uh, I love the way public speaking has played a role in my life to help me heal um, and particularly through sharing my story. I love that. In fact, I discovered you on Dadasphere thanks to Valentine. Hey girl, um, <laughs> you did an amazing job with what you shared talking about finding your essence again. Mm -hmm. And you talked about you're also pregnant right now mm -hmm. um, about this particular pregnancy. Um, if you could, could you share with us how this journey has been different compared to your other two kids? So to start with, um, I actually made a decision last year, yeah. jointly with my husband, okay. um, that although we've always said we want more kids, mm. we have two, we want more, we decided actually to wait a few years okay. um, because I felt I needed some time to get back to myself. Mm. Um, but life had a different idea, <laughs> a different plan. And so here I am, I'm pregnant. Um, and at the beginning of the pregnancy, I felt a lot more illness and nausea than, I, than I had with the other two. It okay. felt, um, I thought maybe I'm just a bit older this time. Mm. You know, maybe I'm not as fit as I was in the last yeah. two. Yeah. Um, but it just felt like something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I went for my scan, the routine scan, yeah. the first one that you have. And um, we were very shocked. Um, and surprised to find that we were having twins. Oh, look at that. So going from, you know, just a few months ago saying, oh, we, wanna we want to wait and we'll, two is enough for the moment to now yeah. we're going to be parents of four. Right. Um, but How was that moment actually just realizing? Honestly. I'm carrying one. I was coming in to see, to hear one heartbeat. Yeah. There are two children in there. How yeah. was that moment? Well, the funny thing is, if, if you had told me before yeah. I got pregnant that this would happen, I would have, I would have said, oh my gosh, that, that How will I even cope? That sounds crazy, you know. But the, the, the real feeling I had was just, wow, like nice. double love. In fact, for me, I was just like you. I knew, when I knew I was pregnant, I didn't know. You, you never know that it's two. But mm. I also had the intense um, nausea. It was horrible. In fact, guys were like, you know you're pregnant, not sick. I was yeah. like, guys, I feel sick. There's I don't know what it is. It's bigger. <laughs> but <laughs> it was intense. Um, and I was nervous. I was scared. It was the first time. I was young. But the minute I discovered oh hang on it's not one but two I had the same feeling of oh wow like all that fear all that sort of went away and so I get it I, I get I get what that moment felt like it's acceptance it you is. know it's acceptance and just I, I was just overjoyed yeah. uh, the, the, it was funny because the way we found out well firstly a few days beforehand I had been talking with my best friend okay. and uh, we had been joking that it was twins Oh, you had? We had. Were you looking different, feeling different? She just said, you're going to have to, because she already was sort of laughing at me for the fact that I had be become pregnant just after telling everybody I'm waiting. Oh, wow. I said, you know, I think it is, actually. I, I, I just feel like it is. I, in fact, I decided to go to the best um, uh, ultrasound wow. radiologist yeah. uh, in Kenya, because I just had this feeling I needed the best. Yeah. Usually I would be just go to anybody. Like whoever's available. Maybe yeah, available. whoever. I, I don't have to drive too far, but this one I drove this far. I had to go to the best. I had this feeling I needed it. So another instinct. Yeah, yeah, it was an instinct. Yeah. I really knew. And my husband also made a joke in the scan. Mm. Oh, doctor, don't tell us it's twins. We can't afford it. You know, he's just yeah. making jokes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when he said, you know, it's, it's, it's there's actually, another one. Wow. <laughs> Here's the second baby. 
And what happened after that? So I was so excited. I was just, my mind was going to all these places about this fact that I was having these twins. And I wasn't listening to the doctor. Mm. And my husband was trying to kind of stop talking, just listen to the doctor, you know, listen, he's trying to tell you something. And the doctor was saying, I'm just trying to find the heartbeat. But he was unable to find the heartbeat with the second baby. The first one had had a beautiful heartbeat, um, strong, big, but the second one, yeah, we, there was no heartbeat. So he told me at that point that uh, it's, he's certain this baby has, has died in the womb. I can't imagine how that must have been to hear those words from the doctor. Yeah, I mean, I for was, any mom, yeah, I was emotional. He had to take the the thing away from my belly because I was shaking so much. Um, and even now, as I talk about it, I'm stronger now because mm. I've talked a lot about it. Okay. But I, I feel, uh, I feel something. And you know, um, the interesting thing is, I have both of them with me right now, both babies. So explain that to us. Yeah, Wh this what's is different from. <sighs> I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to say normal, but a singleton miscarriage to what happened in your case. Please I, take us through that. I know. I so this was all new for me. Mm. I'd never heard of what they call vanishing twin That's syndrome, it. and uh, also I didn't realize it's actually quite common. Apparently, twenty to thirty twin pregnancies, multiple pregnancies. Yes, it, it, it could happen. So basically, what I've what I've learned is mm. that I, a, a miscarriage like this, the baby doesn't come out mm. during the pregnancy. What One of two things could happen. And I've been told different things because uh, dif different women have different experiences. So one is the baby could be absorbed into my body oh. and uh, potentially into their sibling, which I think is a beautiful thing. This world. It's like we're together forever. Right? I mean, if someone has to go, <laughs> yeah. and eventually we all go, right? Yeah. What better place to go than inside your own mother mm. and with your sibling? With your sibling. So that's something it's that powerful. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. And I also feel comfort being able to carry that, um, that knowledge mm. with me. And uh, I'm relieved I don't have to now go and have some kind of operation to remove yes. the baby. How are you now? How are you feeling yeah. emotionally, physically? You know, because it's fairly it's new. Quite fresh. It's, yeah, quite, it's quite fresh. It's only fresh. a few weeks old. The news. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay because I'm talking about it, and because I'm f surrounded by people who have been so supportive and caring. Yeah. If I hadn't have done those, had those two things, I can tell you for sure I wouldn't be okay. I remember the day after the scan. I struggled to even get dressed. I remember I just, you know that feeling, well, I don't know if you know, but I'm sure people have experienced where you just can't do even the most basic things. And I felt like that for a few days. And I felt then guilty for feeling like that. Like I should just pull my socks up and get on with it. I don't know why we do that as women why too. You superwoman and you're strong. Yeah. You can handle this. Kid. I don't know why we do that to ourselves. But you know who told us? Who showed us that template? I think we put the pressure on ourselves, and we expect more than others are expecting from us. That's true. And you know, my husband, my friends were welcoming mm. and expecting me to grieve. So I was sort of in this uh, seesaw between trying desperately to make sure I w got the kids to school on time and did all my responsibilities and then also saying no actually I, I do need to rest I do need to pull back and trying that self-care so it was like a tussle um, and that was really hard and I was extremely emotional and I struggled to remember the other baby for a few days I just was so focused on grieving that I just wasn't able to Remember you have one think about you. the other and now you know we're we're together and I, I, I I'm so focused on that baby but I wasn't for a, a week or so um, I'd like to talk about uh, or to get an understanding how was it like with your husband um, mm. how did he deal with it because um, I know that those at home who uh, yeah who have a different experience where the husbands either went into a shell um, didn't talk about it how was that like for the two of you 
Firstly, I, I, I'm so grateful that I have uh, someone in my life who's so in tune with me. And so even when I wasn't really able to figure out what I needed, it's almost like he knew better than me. And he was able to say, I think you need to sit this one out. I think you need me to do bath for the, other, for the kids today. You know, so I really appreciated that I had him almost two steps ahead, mm. um, pushing me to rest, but not in that way where you're being sort of told, just rest, you know, you don't know how to look after yourself. It wasn't like that. It was more just um, him being caring and supportive. And he knows me. He knows I will try and push myself to do everything. Mm. So, um, but I think emotionally, you know, for us women, the baby is inside us. Mm. Uh, that connection during pregnancy is very real. We feel it. Mm -hmm. We have that instinct, like I, I said before about how I felt I had twins. Exactly. I also felt that things weren't right. So that, that's an instinct we have. So the loss of a baby for a woman, I think, is quite different than for a man. In fact, even to women at home, if you could, um, who have been through a similar situation, are in one, it could be a vanishing twin or a miscarriage. What words of comfort or encouragement or in your own way, what would you like to tell them today? I would like to tell them that it's totally okay to feel terrible for a while. It's okay. It's okay to grieve. You've lost someone. Yeah. And even though we, we accept grieving when it's a, a person we knew and saw, yeah. we often, I think, don't accept grieving mm -hmm. when it's someone we never saw, mm -hmm. like a, a, an unborn child. Yeah. But to the mother, they feel it, they feel it just as much. So grieve, be messy, be late to things. Yes. Don't shower for a few days and have your hair messy. Don't it's, okay. Be super it's okay. And then the other thing I would say is, it depends of course on your personality, but don't be afraid to talk to the right people about it. Mm. The ones who will be supportive. Yes. The good friends, the aunties, your mom, whoever, don't be afraid to talk about it because there's nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, I want to talk about self-care, especially mm -hmm. after a time like this. Um, on your talk, you talked about finding your essence. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you could touch on, even after going through something as traumatic as this, the importance of self-care and what is the journey of finding your essence? One of the reasons why I wanted to wait to have children is I felt I needed space mm -hmm. and time to have the energy to find my essence. When I talk about essence, I'm talking about that thing that makes you feel alive. Um, we often, as adults, we sort of put it down as like a frivolous thing. We don't right. need those. We have much more important things to do. Oh, Responsible. Yes, when I was young, but now. But actually, once you lose that, you really lose the kind of soul of life. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I that that's what I I feel was important for me. But it's ironic that having a pregnancy and losing a child is actually kind of what helped me reconnect. For me, I mean, speaking in front of an audience, it just gives me like goosebumps. I love it. Um, I recently went to a dance class. I love um, dancing and I just feel completely free. And um, I went pregnant belly and all. Yeah. I didn't care. Oh, I just danced. You know, and I, I, I think that more and more of us women, and men too, can tap into that without feeling like it's uh, some kind of frivolous extra, yeah. you know? So that's where I truly believe that if you want to heal from something, like a trauma, a loss, it can sometimes be that one thing. Maybe it, for you it's maybe art or swimming or maybe just being in a forest or yeah. being in a garden, enjoying nature. Enjoying like nature. What it, yeah. pe some people know what it is, some people need to find it. But I truly believe that that brings healing, that brings joy. It makes, it's like the, the spice on a meal. You can have a nutritious meal, but you need a bit of spice. You do. You know. You do. So that's what essence is for me. And, and I'm so glad that through all of this, I've managed to find mine again. You're even glowing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so, so much great. for being brave enough to come on here and share your story. We wish you both and the rest of the family all the very, very best. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, thank you. Just talking about it, the fact that I talked to my best friend. I remember actually, mm. my yeah, best yeah. friend had just had a baby 
and I didn't go to visit them. Yes, it must be hard. Yeah, it was so hard because I felt like, okay, I wasn't ready. Not that I wasn't happy for her. No, I understand. I was like, okay, sick already. But she didn't understand until later, and I told her I had just miscarried. And she was like, why didn't you tell me? You see now, this chains of silence, I see. that is what I am advocating against. Like, let's just break them. Yeah. And how was it together as a couple? Did the father, did he talk about it with you? Did he have an outlet? Because men, like we realized in the first show I did, yeah, I we, as we know, yeah, men do not talk so much. And it's important that, yes, how did, how did he deal with it? We talked. Good. We talked. As a couple? Yes. Okay. We talked. As much as it was hard, mm. I, I squeeze. You Words squeeze it out of Like, <laughs> just talk. Like, just tell me what you're feeling. What, yeah. Like, what is going through your mind right now? Just, yes. like, just put your brain out here for me. Because I can't really know what is in your heart unless you talk. Yeah. So just talk. So we talked. Oh, yeah. And it's so bad for, especially if you had a baby before and then the second one. Because you blame yourself for thinking, okay, maybe I lifted something heavy. Yes. Or, or I let my baby crawl yeah. over the, my you're tummy. You're tough on yeah, yourself. Yeah, you're so tough on yourself. And really. Okay. So doesn't. you talked and walked together. We did walk together. Um, if I may ask, what was or were your greatest fears in that moment, Nana? You're scared that you'll never have another baby. Like, especially if it's the first pregnancy, you're thinking, what, is, what if this is my life? Like, what if I'll never have a baby? And what if I will? Because, you know, you still have the issues. Now you're thinking, okay, will? what if I get this pregnant and still I have to go through this process again? Yeah. What if I will? Yeah. Because if you will, you still have to go through. Exactly. <gasps> it takes a toil on you. I, I think a brain is a very powerful organ because mm. those, those thoughts eat you up. They eat you up. There's a book I read, a lady who is very vocal about uh, the miscarriage experience. Yeah. We think we, most of us know her, Gabriel Union, yeah. um, and she had nine plus miscarriages. And one of the things she said was she got to a point where she stopped telling people that she was pregnant. Um, because, you know, it's that high and low. Yeah. So did you, other than you and your hubby, did you, had you told people, you know, we are expecting a child and now this is the reality? With the first, with with the the first, first pregnancy? Yes, yes. No, I actually... You had not told anyone? No, I didn't. Okay. I just had told the close friends that, are, that know me. Mm. And I remember I had such a hard time telling my aunt, because yeah. I don't have my mom, so it was so hard telling me, Auntie, by the way, nilikuwa na miscarriage. Like you're scared, and it's a natural phenomenon. That and why do you think so. you? Why do you feel you felt scared? Because of the myths surrounding miscarriage. You know those. You feel like she blame me? Was she ask you? Not her. Uh, uh. I felt anyone would just judge you. Like yes. you're thinking, okay, there's so many myths surrounding this whole miscarriage thing. Some people say it's witchcraft, mm. others say Ume about what to you, that's I why. See. You know, there's so much going on around. So it comes so with guilt, shame. Yeah. You, you want you to hide it and keep it yourself. Shameful because as a woman you are since your child you told Kazia you're supposed to you yeah, carry exactly. a child. you're deemed as a create like a life creator. And now you can't create life. You just lost it. So you can't create life. So it comes with shame mm. and you feel less of a being. A human being, I mean, if you can't create life, what is your sole purpose? Yikes. Did you go to that point where you of felt that I way? Of course I felt. I felt that way. And I in mean, those moments, what did you do? Did you... I cry. I used to cry a lot. And then after I cry, I'd feel okay. Did you seek, did you seek, go for counseling or have... I talked to my doctor. Okay. Yeah. So he was very nice. He's called Dr. Pio. He's very nice. So he'll take me through it and just listen. I just wanted someone to listen. To listen you know, to don't you. just interrupt, just listen. Just listen. Listen to me, yeah. share my story. Yeah. And then I had a nanny after I got uh, Gweth. Yeah. I had a nanny who was a day bug. Mm. And she had been married for close to five years. And I asked her, Hey, Jane, now, umeolewa miyakatano, uja consider kupata mtoto. You know the, those small talks you have yeah. with your friend. She was more of a friend. And she told me, and then one day I open up about my miscarriage and she tells me, Mama Jizi, Mimi, Nimekuwa na miscarriage tano. Oh, I'm like, wow. what? At the last one just happened a couple of months ago. Oh, when she's working for you, when she was Akusema. So I ask her, Mbono kuniambia, Ataki tu, Kozalikuwa mechoka. 
five mm. five Those and then many. most of them that like it was not talk up around five months Yikes. that's a whole baby so i told her what did you do i sat on a basin and the clothes were coming out and why didn't you talk to me because she was my tenant house some mm. my body house is good job. somewhere well so i i asked her why didn't you call me and tell me so i said okay i need to take her to the hospital oh, so i take her to my doctor mm. he's very nice so he tells me afanywe your scan to jueni nini mbaya so we found out she has a small cervix so the doctor advised akifika age flani ya pregnancy mlete so i took her like an 18th week and then she had something called mcdonald's stitch oh i see yeah and she had the She's baby she's about carrying baby to term yes Aww. she carried the baby to God term bless you, Nana. yeah and the baby is now like almost three four years. Look at that. Yeah. So from that experience, um, to the women at home, why do you feel it's very important to break that silence on miscarriages and yeah, how should they do it? Like, no, you look at someone by yeah, exactly. speaking about it. Now look, look at her. Like I talk to her. Like it took a conversation for me to help her, take her to the hospital, have her checked, have her baby even. Imagine. And I feel like when I wrote about it. I healed from writing and I hoped I would heal someone by reading you know it's a it's like a dual effect you heal as your as your right? it's cathartic for you exactly. and then there's someone else out exactly. there exactly cuz I got so much feedback anyway how was it tell me about that feedback oh my god one standing like one that is in my head right now a lot like I haven't gotten to forget about that that one yes. said I had a baby and I lost the pregnancy and akafukuzwa na in-laws wake so she went to Akahama akaenda nyumbani and she made a onesie you know onesie right aka make onesie with small f- handprints of a baby i think alichukua mtoto mwingine and made the handprints and then akaeka portrait she told me nana thank you so much for talking about it i went through this and this is to remind me she actually sent me a photo of that one she said this is to remind me that i'm still a mom you're still a mom there's actually an organization called still exactly. a mom exactly i may be a mom to a stillborn or whatever but i'm still a mom that's true so she's still she's still been trying to get the baby i hope she will get that rainbow wish, baby soon indeed yeah, the rainbow baby yeah. um before we go for a break maybe you can tell us um so now you five years later yeah. you have two children oh yeah look at god Um how soon did you start trying for another child? Well, I asked the doctor and he said in three months time your ch- your uterus should be ready. You oh, know really? the whole scrapping yes. and, and, and So I remember even my boyfriend after I lost the baby ran back to the doc and said, "Uko sure kuna kitu unaweza do yani?" He wasn't believing. Yeah. yeah. And he was told that uh, the 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 best thing you can do now ni aoshwe, you know? So uh, Yeah. Yes, yes, because there's nothing now you can do. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. So for those moms who are pregnant and of course looking forward to their journey, it gets better. 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 Um, as Nana said, it gets better. And when we come back to the next part, we get to hear about the better times um, that Nana is now experiencing. Stay tuned. Intentional. Yeah. yeah. But were you afraid? Of course. It's natural, yeah. yeah. I think it's natural for everyone. Every woman has lost a baby before. Yeah. yeah. But how was the feeling after you finally get to meet this time the baby, you met her, you held her. Yeah. How was that? How was oh that like? Gosh, you felt a kicking. Yes. Yeah, yes. I felt the kicks. Yeah. I was okay as much as I was, I was losing weight because of the yes. worries. I remember when she was about to come, I, I went to the hospital and I think the baby wants to come and I went to the hospital. Of course the labor story was a long. It was long. Labor for like 21 hours. Wow. Yes. Wow. But then the baby just came in and just changed everything. Like he sort of heal mm. and I feel sorry for those women tr- women trying to get a baby after the miscarriage and they can't. But mine I think mine was easier. It was actually easier for me when I had the baby really? to you don't really forget but at least it takes your attention away you understand like you stop 
thinking so much about what the really loss. happened. Yeah. Was it a boy? Was it a girl? Would will, will he be, you know? What would he be now? Yeah. How old would he be? Yeah. And what are you loving and learning most from the motherhood experience? Motherhood experience is different. Every day is different, yeah. you know? There's those days. Of course, they are fighting, but they love each other. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have twins. I see that the, the sibling rivalry of is real. Of course, <laughs> it's real. And mm -hmm. like I can tell my daughter, just come and chew me. My son, you know, come and chew me. He said no. Oh, okay. But if I call my daughter, come She'll and chew me. Now the boy will come. Nights running. are fighting. Now I want to chew you, you know. Oh. So it's, it's ecstatic. From that experience, how did it transform you, Nana, as a person? I realized that not all pregnancies end up with babies in our arms. Others just grow wings and fly away. But they're still our children, right? Yes. And That's I realized true. like life is really sacred. Mm. Really it is. It is. Yeah. Is that what led to there's this saying that goes there's um purpose in our pain? Mm -hmm. Um is that what Maybe I could be wrong. What led to what you're doing now with yes. Um, the Parenthood? Yes, tell us about Parenthood I, uh, 101. I do Parenthood 101 on Instagram. I have a small highlight that I always talk about motherhood. I remember I created it after I had the second baby because the first baby, I I didn't know how to latch the baby. Don't I had, we all? We learn. I, I know, but mine was so bad I had to go in for surgery for mastitis so i realized maybe it's it's something i need to talk about so people can just be wary like just know how to latch the baby correctly uh postpartum depression things that mother new mothers are yeah go through going through because you know you just got a baby now whole being is here mm. who what depends do do? on you for love care now what do we do and the reality of the funny thing you realize is yeah. Before you, I'm sure you read um, what to expect when you're expecting. Uh -huh. uh, All the yes, books that you read, yeah. baby center, they when the human being is, yes. when the baby is there in your arms, yeah. all of a so sudden, so like, and what do I do? You you read, <laughs> or it's you realize it works differently, yeah. you know, and children yeah. are different. Yeah. Yeah. They don't come with a manual. They so don't. You they learn. Don't. But you mentioned it, we don't, it doesn't come with a manual. So is that yeah. what Printed One on One is for you? Yes, giving new moms like a manual exactly. a and a guide. Something just to guide you like not really these are the rules and regulations of parenthood it's, it's more of this could be this so learn you don't have to go through what i went through so if i can control it a little then because when i talk about mastitis and how to latch a baby it's universal latching a baby is universal. just do it correctly you have no mastitis exactly because i had mastitis i had to go to the hospital my baby did not breastfeed the second one, I was actually now breastfeeding. Like, it's the first experience yet I have another see. baby. So you see. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome. Um, we wish you all the very best with your beautiful, beautiful family. Thank um, you. May you continue growing. Yeah. <laughs> and um, thank you for sharing your story. To someone at home, I hope what Nana has shared is is a reminder, you know, to break the culture of silence in whatever situation you may be in. You never know who you're helping. And even for yourself, as she's mentioned, just talking about it, she got a place of healing and was able to also bring others to that space. Um, so we thank you for watching this show. Do find the handles right here below. We'll catch you next week. Have a good one. Good night.